For the Southern California Prep Insider, I'm Keith DeMolda here for another edition of the Best of the Rest podcast. We are here from Bonita High School in beautiful Laverne, California for another edition of the podcast, the home of the Bearcats. And we know it's a little bit off script. It's not a city section school, but it's still a southern section school, and they're doing a couple of great things. They got a field hockey practice going on over to our right, some football practice uh, going on over to our left. Interestingly enough, they... Don't have a football field right now. It's actually being torn up. They're getting a whole entirely new field uh, that'll be ready come next year. So right now they're playing on a couple of these spare athletic fields here from Benita High School. Either way, we're here for the best of the rest of the city section. Eight man, D3, D2. We have it all for you right here on the podcast. Without further ado, let's get into some eight man football. And there was a couple of blowouts for and against some city section teams. Let's first start it out with Animo Robinson, who went up to Santa Barbara to take on Kate. It was a huge victory for the Rams, 73-18 to over Animal Robinson. So Animal Robinson drops a tough non-conference game. They come back this week, a huge game that we will preview in just a bit. New Designs Watts had a forfeit to Heritage Christian. Probably a good call because Heritage Christian is a very good team. Uh, so they probably would have gotten blown out anyways. Lighthouse Christian, 44 nothing over Teach Check Charter. That's a, that's a mouthful right there. Teach Check Charter. Uh, blanked in that one. Hesperia Christian 44-8 over Sherman Oak CES. Fulton with a big win over New Designs University Park 40-16. NVMI squeaked out a 8-point win 22-14 over Sun Valley. And then Discovery absolutely blasted USC Hybrid 66-14 in that one to round it out for the 8-man. Then moving on to D3. Santee 61-8 over Rivera. We'll get to this game and a player a little bit later in the podcast. Locke, 41-9 over Belmont. Grant, 38-9 over Polly. Verduga Hills with a huge win over North Hollywood, 40-19. And then Marquez barely, just barely squeaked out a win, 14-12 over Fremont in that one. Moving on to D2, a couple big games. Southgate, 20-14 over Roosevelt. The Rough Riders' early success clearly has lost some steam. Kennedy, 49 to 20 over Van Nuys. Bell 50 to 22 over Huntington Park. Huntington Park still looking for a win on the year. Garfield 77, Legacy 14. Some of these Southgate teams not doing so hot this week. Canoga Park 41 to 6 over Panorama. Arlita 37 to 14 over Chavez. And then Fairfax with a huge victory 42 to 6 over Marshall. So Marshall moving up as we know from D3 to D2. They're having some trouble in some of these non-conference games. Either way, look forward to their league play coming this week. Manual Arts with a 35 to 34 win over Jefferson this week. I was actually at that game, uh, and it was a fantastic game. We'll get to that in just a bit. Everything's coming up in just a bit, folks. Just keep, keep it here. Um, but here's an interesting note of the week I wanted to mention. Los Angeles High, you know, out of our out of our realm in the best of the rest there in D1. They beat Ribbit Academy 20 to 14 thanks to, get this, Eight punt blocks from L.A. High. I'm not sure if that stat is correct. Max preps, they tend to tend to embellish some of these stats. I'm not exactly sure if there was eight. Either way, huge plays from L.A. Har. Also 130, uh, 133 yards and two touchdowns from Kamar Allen for L.A. High. So huge plays from all of the Romans all night. Uh, but get this, something interesting to know. Uh, Ribbit Academy, yes, Ribbit Academy. Their mascot, the Fighting Frogs. Get that. The Fighting Frogs, Ribbit, get it. I don't know. It's some type of joke, folks. Either way, terrible pun, big win for LA High, 20 to 14. I just wanted to give you guys that. So we go from P U N S to P O T W. Puns to Players of the Week, folks. The Player of the Week, Santee's Joseph Todd. The senior rushed for 360 yards and six touchdowns, a city section record. He broke the record. Oh, my goodness, what a performance this week over Rivera. Player of the week, player of the year, really. Joseph Todd has been outstanding. He also had a 50-yard kick return in that game. Either way, we have to shout him out because it seems like every single time he touched the ball, he was taking it almost to the house. Joseph Todd and that Santee offense with 551 rushing yards and eight touchdowns, a complete demolition of Rivera. So watch out for Santee in that division. Speaking of things to watch out for, some games to watch out for this week. 
Santee taking on Jefferson this week. Jefferson off of a one-point really close loss. Verdugo Hills taking on Monroe. Kennedy taking on Reseda. Animo Robinson in a rematch of the 2018 eight-man title game taking on Sherman Oak CES. Watch out for that one. Torres taking on Eagle Rock. Franklin versus Lincoln. And then New Designs University Park taking on NVMI. Watch out for that Torres Eagle Rock game. I know, you know, Eagle Rock has had blowout win after blowout win after blowout win. Uh, but right now, Torres, they're 4 and 1. We'll see if the upper division can defeat the lower division. Either way, should be a great game of some North LA schools. So I should have done this before, but I figured, as you know, right now, right before league play starts, is as good of a time as any to do some predictions uh, for all the championships from each of the divisions and the best of the rest. And we'll see, you know, who's going to be in it and who's going to win it all. Some predictions I know should have come at the beginning of the podcast, but either way, we're doing it now, we're doing it here. So for the eight-man division, Animal Robinson, far and away, seems like the best team in that division. I say they're going to win it all. The runners-up, though, a team you may not know, Fulton. Yes, I say Fulton is going to be the runners-up. They have a good balanced attack and some impressive wins on the year. So watch out for Fulton, although it's really any anybody's game. Sherman Oaks CES could come out and, and surprise everybody. Either way, we'll see come the end of the season just who is in that championship game. Uh, in D3, I say it's going to be Santee with the ring. The best offense and the best defense by far. As we mentioned, Joseph Todd has been fantastic. Uh, but I see Manual Arts actually sneaking up in that division, D3. Uh, they have a good balanced attack. They like to run the football, but they can also pass the football. Their defense is also very good. Some impressive wins, as I mentioned. Uh, so Manual Arts I see being the runner-up in D3. And then in D2, it's a team that has been unbelievable all year long. Franklin, the Panthers. Alfred Bobadilla, his passing ability is second to none in the city section. I say the win, they win the D2 championship. Uh, and then right behind them is the Wilson Mules, the best offense-defense ratio behind Franklin in that division. So watch out for Wilson. I see them going to be the runners-up. Um, so in the small school game of the week, as I mentioned, I was at Manual Arts Jefferson this week. Two hot teams coming off big 40 nothing uh, blowout wins. Jefferson was hot, and here's another thing. where We talked about mascots early on, how the Fighting Frogs was something that I loved, uh, but also the Jefferson High Democrats, that is their nickname, the Democrats. They go by the Demos, which, as you may or may not know, is one of my nicknames, so people would always call me Demo. So now, basically, Jefferson High is my favorite team ever because they're the Demos, and I can relate. I'm, I'm one of the Demos. So either way, folks, um, it was a huge game. They're at Manual Hearts High, interestingly enough. The Toilers went up early. They ran the football. They pounded the rock 21 to 17, or rather 21 to 7 at the half. And then the demos, they came back with a vengeance. They had an opportunity at the very end of the game to win it all. It was all tied up 27 27 at the end of the game, but they ran out of timeouts. There were some clock issues. So the game went into overtime, tied 27-27. to It was a great game throughout, and it was kind of a fitting ending. Jefferson scores first. They kick the field goal. They score from, I believe, 15 yards out or something like that. So it seemed at that point that Jefferson was going to win the ball game. Then Jalen McElroy, the starting quarterback for the Toilers, came in. They scored via the run, and then McElroy took it in at the pylon for the game-winning two-point conversion. MAHS wins the ball game. It was unbelievable. They rushed the field afterwards. A 35-34 win. Right now, some of the hottest teams in Jefferson and Manual Arts in that D3 division. So a guy to mention from that Manual Arts Jefferson game was a guy, Isaiah Whitehead. College coaches, if you're watching, make sure to get this guy in your squad because he's a bruising, physical, fast runner who is incredibly talented on both sides of the ball. There's a reason why Manual Arts is 4-2, and two, and he is it. Uh, some final stats, interestingly enough, McElroy went 4 for 9, 91 yards and a touchdown through the air, and then 162 yards and a touchdown and a two-point conversion to win the game, by the way, on the ground. The Toilers, as a team, put up 44... Uh, 441 yards and four touchdowns on the ground over Jefferson. Uh, I actually spoke with McElroy after the game about his walk-off win and how this team is looking to improve come next week. For the Southern California Prep Insider, I'm Keith Demolta here from Blewett Field, the home of a winning ball club today, the Manual Arts Toilers, with a 35-34 overtime victory over the Jefferson Demos. I'm here with quarterback Jalen McElroy. Jalen, huge game today. You had the winning two-point conversion. How did it feel? Uh, it was very exciting. Uh, they took us to the last to the last play, but um, it was a team effort. Couldn't have done it without everybody. And whew, what a, what a game, honestly. You guys were up 21 to seven at the half. Then Jefferson started to come back. Did you think this one was going to overtime? 
Uh, no, I thought we were going to be able to pull together and get a last, a last fourth quarter stand, you know, and, um, you know, things don't go as planned, but we'll take the victory any way we can get it, honestly. Jefferson coming into this game, they had a huge win last week, a 40-point blowout. So did you guys. Did you guys see them being a tough test? Oh, absolutely. We, we heard that they haven't lost a league game in about three years. So our whole mentality was that we're the underdogs and that we had to take the fight to them. And I think we did a pretty good job in doing so. What was the best part of your team play today? Um, the way that we stayed resilient and we all stuck together even when times got tough. And yeah, it, it was on display. We never gave up. And in the end, the scoreboard showed. Huge win, 35-34 in overtime. What is something you guys are looking forward to improve on come next week? Um, honestly, we want to we wanna improve all aspects of our, of our play. So whether it's defense or offense. Um, overall, we did a pretty good job scoring, but we had to maintain our consistency throughout the game. Huge win for the Toilers over the Demos. This is Jalen McElroy. I'm Keith Tamolder for the Southern California Prep Insider. Let's send it back to the podcast. So watch out for the Toilers of Manual Arts. Interestingly enough, people don't know this actually, but Manual Arts is the current city section leader, or one of the leaders rather, uh, in city section titles. Back in the day, this is like the 30s, 40s, the early 20s. Manual Arts was actually the team to beat in the city section. Not Narbonne, you know, not, not, not Crenshaw. It was Manual Arts was the team to beat. And maybe they could be kind of restoring their former glory here this season. Either way, that's going to wrap it up here from Bonita High School. I'm Keith DeMolder for the Southern California Prep Insider saying thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out those highlights on YouTube and also give that other podcast, Connor and Alex, a shout-out uh, on Twitter. They want to hear all of your guys' thoughts about the top ten. Either way, this is going to do it for the best of the rest. Here from Bonita High School, I'm Keith DeMolder saying take it easy. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.